Um, my name is Andy Neeson. I'm a lead developer at WordPress. I spoke previously at a uh, WordPress New York City meetup group, I don't know, a year ago probably, a year and a half ago. Put the mic closer. Yeah. Better. Sorry. Um, so my name is Andy Neeson, lead developer at WordPress. I live in Washington, D.C. I'm up here just for a few days. I want to talk a little bit about WordPress 3.7, which is a platform-focused release. Uh, it, I heard the initial question of when is it coming out. Uh, less than two months, which is not normally our timeline for these things. Uh, normally we're talking four months, maybe six months. Uh, 3.6 took about seven months, uh, but we're doing this one in the span of about 60 days, which is a bit of a difference. Uh, and we're working on our platform, we're also working on a lot of our other processes. Uh, one of them is that we're trying to make it a lot easier for people to contribute. There are a lot of people here, uh, there are a number of people here who I know have tried to contribute to WordPress core, uh, many with success, that said we can make it a lot easier. Uh, and there are a number of different ways to contribute, whether you're contributing to documentation or to WordPress core itself or to some of the sister projects like BuddyPress or BBPress. Or if you're just trying to uh, make it, if you're just trying to learn maybe how to develop for WordPress. Uh, so what we're actually doing is we're working on modernizing a lot of our tools. It, you, you might be familiar with this if you've been following along, but no longer is WordPress just WordPress. When you check it out as a developer, you're now also getting all of our tests, a lot of our tools, uh, and more things to come. Uh, there's now a new build process. JavaScript unit tests are on the way, if that strikes your fancy and a number of other things along those lines that are trying to make WordPress a bit more of a modern project when dealing with these things. We're also rebuilding, pretty much from the ground up, our developer documentation and our contributor documentation. If you go to developer.wordpress.org right now, you will see just a little coming soon message. But it was announced at WordCamp San Francisco that we're gonna kind of change things up a little bit. We're working on not only handbooks, which would be for a lot of curated information that you would normally find either on the codex or someone's random blog, uh, but then also a, a code reference uh, that a number of people have been working on, including Paul, uh, on trying to basically grab all of the information we have out of WordPress, which we're talking uh, three or four thousand functions, two or three thousand hooks, all of these different pieces of information we're trying to throw together on one website in a really great way. Uh, there are a lot of third party pieces of uh, resor resources out there just like this, but we feel that we can probably do this best because we know the code the best. And as part of that, we're also doing a full inline documentation sweep of core. Uh, for the developers here, there were another hand, a number of hands that went up. We we're adding documentation to every single hook, describing exactly what it does, what passes into it, what you need to return from it. Uh, really helpful, really awesome. If you want to get involved in something like that, well, it's a really easy way to get involved in just contributing to core because it only involves just a little bit of text. Uh, the worst thing that goes wrong is a spelling typo, right? Not bad. In terms of features, we're trying to actually not make this a feature-focused release. There's gonna be a few things that we're going to do. Uh, we're focusing a bit on security, trying to do a, make a few changes to make WordPress a little more secure. Uh, and we're also trying to focus more on stability, including fixing quite a number of bugs. We've already closed uh, 300 tickets in the last two weeks alone and we expect to close uh, quite a number more in the next uh, six, seven weeks or so. We're also focusing on updates, which we focused on a number of times. Uh, updates don't need to be painful. Uh, in fact, there was uh, one site already tonight that I updated uh, just by pushing the button, and I promised her that if the site broke, then I would fix it. I knew I would not need to. But there are a lot more things that we can be doing to make updates easier. So one thing that we're actually going to do is in 3.7, if you can read that, uh, so if, you are, if your site is due a security or a minor release, so if you're on 3.7.0 and 3.7.1 comes out, we're gonna do our best to actually have your site update, update to 3.7.1 automatically. So your site will be secure, your site will be as stable as possible, your site will have those major bugs fixed, and you'll be good to go. In WordPress 3.8, uh, we're gonna go for another short release cycle. Uh, I'm talking about 3.8 already because with 3.7, only two months, we realized, well, we need something to come after that. So we're actually starting 3.8 at the exact same time, we're doing two cycles at once. We haven't done this before. Uh, it's really interesting. 
Uh, we're trying to maybe overlap our cycles a little bit, similar to the way, for example, Google Chrome might be doing with a lot of their overlapping of, of development cycles. Does anyone, if you use Chrome, does anyone know what version you use anymore? Yeah, exactly, right? That's kind of what we're trying to get at at some point. So maybe you're just updating WordPress like clockwork every four months or every three months or every two months, whatever it might be, and you otherwise don't need to worry about it. It tries to keep itself updated for security releases. Maybe you're not even pushing that update, update button at some point. And we're gonna start trying to build features as plugins first. Uh, it's, this is kind of a new process for us. We've done, a lot of other we've done a lot of other features in the past where if you're looking at maybe revisions in 3.6 or um, if you're looking at media in 3.5, the customizer in 3.4, all of these features that you may, might use every day now were all built originally as plugins but as part of the same development cycle. So we start in January, we end in May, the plugin gets, start, gets written starting January 15th and by February 15th hopefully it's ready because it's going in. We're gonna try and back away from that a little bit because we want to actually have the ability to experiment a little bit and also fail a little bit. So if it takes us 18 months to get something right, it will take us 18 months to get something right. If we can get something right in four or five months, that's great too. And we're also working on some long-term roadmaps for making some changes to the code base. So we've already started on this. If you're interested in things like taxonomies and post types, there are some changes that are, that are gonna be made over the next year or so. Uh, that should really improve some of the underlying schema and some of the APIs. And we're just trying to really across the board empower a number of contributors to weigh in on a lot of the things that they're trying to work on. Uh, and trying to say, let's say, if you're really interested in multi-site, which I know Boone talked a lot, of, a lot about. There are a number of people who have these roadmaps in their head of where they want multi-site to go. We're gonna try and get those on paper and then make sure that anyone who wants to contribute to those goals can do so. And we can also talk a little bit about, I guess, the features and plugins idea of what we want to do. The idea behind this experimentation is we can kind of reach outside the a box a little bit and what we want to work on. Now, neither of the two ideas I'm about to show you are necessarily going to go anywhere. They might not go anywhere beyond the mock-ups that I'm about to show you, but what if we can rebuild the editing experience from scratch? Like, what would it look like? That's really tough to see. So we're not going to make it pink. Um, that's not the plan. Uh, this is, if you can kind of see, it doesn't really look like a standard interface. You might be able to see that from there. Uh, maybe dragging and drop different blocks of content into your post. So if you want to grab an image, you just take it and drag it right into, your, into the visual editor or whatever it is you want to do. Uh, and then also maybe what if we rethought menus and pages? Those of you who have worked with menus, I heard some descriptions of the difference between menus and pages earlier, might find them a little weird. What if they were the same idea? Uh, you can actually see this is pages on the left and menus on the right as part of one screen. Now this is actually about 18 hours old because this was already scrapped and they've tried something else. But the idea is that maybe if we try out all these different ideas, maybe we can find something that just makes the experience better. We're not necessarily building all new features uh, from scratch in terms of, you know, let's come up with this random new thing that WordPress should do. Uh, and instead, a lot of times we're rebuilding a lot of our existing features to make them just that much better, whether it's revisions or media or customizing themes. These aren't new ideas, uh, but you know, if you're working with widgets all day, how can we make widgets better to use? Both on the simple level, as you, all you want to do is just move a text widget, or maybe you want to change text or whatever it is you're doing, you're moving things around. Or on the advanced level, you're managing a very, very complex site how can we build a tool that works great for both of those extremes? And if you'd like to follow along what we're working on, you can go to make.wordpress.org, uh, slash core will take, a lot, take you to a lot of the core development, a lot of the code, slash UI takes you to a lot more of these mockups. Uh, and there's also these same teams for accessibility for the mobile applications, if you're a mobile apps developer and want to get involved on there. If you're interested in support and you want to help out in the support forums, and also any number of our documentation drives. So if you are interested, let's say, in contributing to code documentation, I would definitely take a look in the next few days. I believe there should be a post up by Thursday to talk about a lot of those things. Uh, and finally, one little uh, random announcement here. Uh, Scott Taylor in the back, who you might know, he's spoken here before previously at eMusic, now at the New York Times. Uh, it's not technically announced yet, so I guess I'm doing that now, that he's gonna be a guest committer. He's gonna be a core developer for WordPress 3.7 working on trying to cut down a lot of our bugs. Yes, Scott. I think, I think that picture's even better in the pink filter. But we'll work on it.
Uh, and then even though Boone answered them all already, uh, I'd be happy to take any uh, a quick little Q&A. Thank you, guys. Any questions? About, about WordPress, about 3.7, about, I think all the questions were about BuddyPress. Yeah. <laughs> One menu could be good. It also, sometimes people want to use different menus in different locations. So maybe they might be building an entire footer with menus. They might have a navigation with menus. They might have some sub-navigation inside with menus. That said, it could possibly be a little easier to build one giant tree and then use pieces of that tree in different places in the theme. Uh, of course, it gets really complex really quickly. So how can we make this super simple for someone to be able to use without struggling with it? Striving for simplicity is really, really important to us. Uh, WordPress should never get more complicated with its release. It should only get simpler. I hope so, yeah. but I don't know. They've already canned the idea, so they're trying something else. But take a look at it. If you go to make.wordpress.org UI, there's a few mock-ups as recently as I think like either earlier today or yesterday on let's try a different approach or maybe like a tab or something like that. So they're still working on it. Yeah? And you the latest releases squash a number of bugs. Sure. Uh, a large number of bugs, I guess. What's being done to mitigate that going forward, especially if the release cycle is going faster? So, and that, that's not the question, is a critic, it's just general. No, so one of, the, one of the nice things about release cycles going faster is that it cuts down the amount of time that we're spending purely focused on features. Uh, because what ends up ultimately happening, to get, I mean, this is how software slips, is that you have a bunch of bugs that are fixing, you throw a feature and you have a lot of bugs for that feature, and that specific feature suddenly becomes the make or break of that release. And you have to fix all the bugs for that feature, you have to get this feature perfect, this feature needs to ship at the end. And the problem is that the feature starts to slip, and then we're releasing three months after we want to, or two months after we want to, or even a few weeks after we want to, because all of our effort was concentrated on that feature. While we're slipping, the next cycle hasn't started yet. So a lot of the developers who are focused more focused on APIs and bugs and things like that aren't necessarily working on those things. Now, a lot of them use this time to maybe get caught up on freelance work or other projects. Uh, but at the same time, there's, there's a really lost opportunity there. So the big idea here is actually, I mean, in part for me, is to maybe separate a lot of those things. If we have a number of teams working specifically in a, in a very autonomous way of take this feature, tackle it, see what you can come up with, come back to us in a few months. And then the, a lot of the other lead developers and core developers who want to focus on building new APIs and architecture and building a new, a better, a stronger foundation for future features and future releases can still do so. So I think it's actually... So it's kind of, it's a, it's a different, it's different processes. In the case of 3.7, right now, I'm, I'm leading the release. There are a number of others who are working on it. We have dozens of, of, of contributors who have already contributed already. In fact, more than, more than 100 at this point already in the last only three weeks. Uh, those same people may just contribute to 3.8 and may contribute to 3.9. But we're also trying to build a number of teams to work on maybe a feature that might go into 3.8 or might go into 3.9 or might go into 4.0 or whatever it might be. So it's, it's, we have so many people that not, not everyone needs to be all paying attention to the same thing at once. We can start to split up a lot of our tasks and work in different directions. Any other questions? Okay, one more follow-up to that. Sure. What do you use internally for the footer task management? Internally for test management. So nothing is internal. Right? It's all public. It's all open source. Everything's out there. Uh, I, don't, I don't work for WordPress.com or anything like that. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of individuals who work for various companies. They might work for media organizations. They might work as, a, as consultants. They might, in their day job, be you know, a firefighter or something like that, which is actually something we've seen. Uh, they just enjoy doing maybe this. So in terms of process, a lot of it is uh, track or bug tracker where uh, everything is logged. 
At the same time, a lot of feature development uh, might not always occur like that. A lot of times it's going to occur in a plugin or the communications might occur sometimes in IRC if it's real time or if they're, if they're asynchronous, they might occur on make.wordpress.org, which is a front end posting. So. All right, guys, thank you very much. Steve, appreciate it. Oh.